So when the rib cage is in neutral, you automatically engage your core more. You guys are always asking for core work, right? When you pull your rib cage back, there's all kinds of benefits. So pulling the rib cage back, try it. Pull it towards the back of your shirt. You'll notice that your belly tones. Can you guys feel that? No. You just saying that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, anybody, let me know if you don't feel it. So what we're gonna do is keep emphasizing that with all the poses and movement we do today. The other advantage too, keeping the rib cage neutral is we can get our shoulder blades on the back. So if your rib cage is forward, you cannot get your shoulders on the back. It's like physically impossible. If you take your ribs back, you cannot get your shoulder blades on the back. It's physically impossible. Did you see that? Like they're spread apart. They are not coming together onto the back. And then this way, they are not coming together onto the back. Maybe a little bit, but not a lot. So there's so many reasons to take the rib cage back that we're going to integrate it into all our work. What do you think of that? Any questions before we get going? All right. Here we go. And we got to warm up because I'm cold. I think, I don't know what it is. I thought I saw like negative something. Even the doggies didn't want to be outside this morning. So we're going to start with our breathing. We're going to sit up tall. So yeah, those of you who didn't see, there is an article because you guys, we have a lot of questions about breathing. So I wrote an article for the um, Park, Michigan Parkinson Foundation newsletter. And it is, um, so any of you who get their newsletter, and it's also on our website, so in our blog section. So let's start, we're sitting tall. We always start and then feel, sense your feet on the earth. And it's almost like returning, right? Because every class we do it, we go to our breath and feel the air come in and out through the nostrils. So unless you're feeling stuffy, you're in and out through the nostrils. I'll add one of the Ayurvedic tricks is to put a little oil, they call it anointing the senses up your nostrils. So you use like a dropper and you drop it in and then you massage your nostrils. You can like lie on your bed and do that. And you can use um, an oil that you like. I use sesame oil. That's an Ayurvedic trick. Um, but you could use something else that you feel is safe. They do make, they make, it's called Nazaya drops that have herbs in it. Don't put anything crazy up there though. Oh, you know. I mean, I would say either coconut oil or sesame oil or, or are these drops made for it, but it's a really nice way to anoint the nose that gets off and dry this time of year. So breathing in and out through the nose, take your, take two fingers or a finger and put it underneath your nostrils and feel your breath. So it's like, it feels like maybe cool air going in and up. And then out is warmer air. So we have all kinds of things going on. The nitric oxide, the little hair follicles that help to cleanse and get rid of anything that we don't need in there. Get rid of the germs, get rid of the toxins, get rid of gunk. Breathing in and out. The hair follicles are there for a reason. They're a filter. So keeping our breathing flowing in and out through the nose. And it, it's kind of nice to feel how soft it is, right? It doesn't have to be this like forceful breath coming in and out. 
let's do cat cow and think about the rib cage going back and forth. We did this on Wednesday, but I want to really review so you can feel it. So exhale round your spine and feel the rib cage go back, going towards the back of your shirt. And then on the inhale, lift the heart, the rib cage goes forward. And you can let it jut forward here. I want you to feel that, but it may not feel good. We're not going to do that again, but you can feel it this time. Jut it forward. Now let's exhale, round back. Rib cage goes back. Now go through center. Try to keep the rib cage a little back as you lift your heart. It's going to go a little bit forward, but not as much if you keep toning your belly and pulling it back, even as you do this back bend. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift, trying to keep the rib cage back as you go into this little back bend, which is cow pose. So there's a little toning. It's like not fully giving way so that the rib cage goes forward. One more. Exhale, round. Inhale, tone, lift up, heart rising, sit bones moving back behind us, making that C curve. And then come back to center, back to center. Let's open up the sides of the neck, lengthen them. So taking your right ear towards your right shoulder. This always feels so good. Breathe in and out through the nose. And then lifting the head and ear towards opposite shoulder. A friend was over yesterday and she was saying how her neck was sore. So I told her about my buckwheat pillow theory and also using the ball when lying down and rolling on it. I think it's such a great thing to do. I'll remind you later. Let's take our arms forward and upwards. Beautiful. Lift tall, notice the ribs you might wanna go forward, but don't let them pull them towards the back of your shirt. Spread your fingers. Take your arms out into a big T. Imagine you have like beams of energy going out through each of your fingers, spread them. And then exhale, lower your arms down and around and up and around. And you can bend the elbows a little bit. So you might come towards a little bit more forward in the chair, lifting, rounding, taking them back. And go with the flow. If it feels like it's too much, bend your elbows, make it a little smaller. Perhaps as you move, it goes a little bit bigger. So forward, out to the side. Let's lift it and lower it. Take it forward, up, out to the side, back to forward, reverse it. Out and up and down and out. Gaze towards your left, inhale to center. Gaze towards your right, inhale to center. Arms forward, maybe you gaze upwards, out to the side, gaze right, back to center, gaze left, back to center, arms lift, exhale, hands of the heart. If your arms get tired, take them down and begin again when you're ready. Circle the right arm forward at a diag, take it back and around like you're holding a platter. Other arm, forward and back and around. And keep alternating a few times. So you can bend the elbow and then let it flow back. Feel the movement even in your back as you do this. So 
feel the stretch. You might feel it along the sides of the rib cage. One more, each side. Perhaps turning your head as you switch arms. And now take your arms out and let's twist towards the right and towards the left, like you're a washing machine kind of, you know. Well, I don't know if the new ones do that now that I say that, but just kind of flowing right and left with your breath. So you might inhale one way and exhale the other, or just keep breathing and not worrying about it so much. Breathing in and breathing out. Good. Arms wide. Bring the elbows towards each other. Lift the elbows up. Press the elbows in, take the forearms away. Bring the palms together, take the elbows away. A few times, elbows together, arms out. Palms together, elbows out. Twist towards your right. Pull the belly in. Pull the ribs back. Inhale the center. Pull the ribs back as you twist. Breathe in. And breathe out. Back to center. Interlace fingers. Rest palms away. Open them up. Awesome. Curl the fingers under. Feel a good stretch. Oh, I see a yawn over there. I see a yawn. We got to wake you up. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I'm not going to miss it. Yep. Take your right arm over here to the left. <laughs> got to wake you up. Happy Friday. Open up your arms. Left elbow over right. Give yourself a hug, breathe in, breathe out, open it up, lower it down. We're gonna move our eyeballs now. They're gonna go clockwise around the clock a few times. So moving your eyeballs, to, don't miss a time. Keep going around. Unless you get dizzy, then you're probably not gonna wanna do this one, right? Don't miss an hour on the clock. Notice if there's a tendency to miss one of the hours. Maybe it's easier to look to your right than it is to your left. Come back to neutral, so looking forward. Now we'll go the other way on the clock. Reverse it counterclockwise. Maybe it's easier with the first few numbers. And then as we start circling the other way, it just feels different. Really feel that your muscles and your eyes are moving and working. You can see why it's important to do it. Come back to center. So you're gazing forward, look up, look down without moving your head. I moved my head a little bit and then realized I wasn't supposed to do that. Keep your head neutral, look up, look down, look up on the inhale, look down on the exhale. Come back to center, looking straight in the middle of the clock. Gaze to your right, to your left, back to right, back to left. Come back to center. Now, a little trick for the neck. A lot of times we don't know where to put our neck. So here's another little trick that I've learned. We've done, we've done some different things with the neck. You're gonna take a hand behind your head and then one hand under your chin. And you're gonna gently push your head into your chin, just very gently. We don't push the head around, right? Gently press your head into your hand and then your hand makes stability so the head can't go that far back. And then you have a hand underneath your chin. So when it's under the chin, that gives you an idea about what parallel to the earth means. So when the chin is up, neck is out of alignment. When chin is forward, neck is out of alignment. When chin is down, neck is out of alignment. When it's too far back, most people don't do that. When it's too far back, it's out of alignment. Most of us take it forward or downward. So the hand on the head behind there gives you a little idea. Gently press it back into your palm and make sure your chin 
is about parallel. You know, we get these neck aches, right? My friend was over yesterday. She said, oh, my neck hurts. I'm like, that's a very common, common concern. So this gives you an idea where the head should be. Release it, let that go, let that go. And let's open up our legs for goddess pose. Let's do some alternate nostril breathing. So find a good width to start getting a stretch here. This could be too wide. And this, you're not getting much of a stretch. So find a place in the middle where you feel a stretch, but it, you can hold it for a little bit while we do alternate nostril breathing. Alternate nostril breathing, you're breathing in through the nose and out through the nose and in through the nose and out through the nose. So let's go for it. You're gonna take a breath in and a breath out. Use your, either your right hand or your left hand and you're gonna use your thumb and either your ring finger, one of your fingers. Another alternative is to use both hands um, or no hands. So we're gonna try this. I'll show it the traditional way and maybe using both hands. So breathe in and breathe out. It's always through the nose. And then take a breath in, block your right nostril, Exhale out through the left. Breathe in through the left. Block it. Exhale out through the right. Breathe in through the right. Block it. Breathe out through the left. Breathe in through the left. Block it. Breathe out through the right. Breathe in. Block it. Breathe out through the left, breathe in through the left, lock it, breathe out through the right. So you could do it with both fingers. If you can do it with the one hand, do it with the one hand. So what it would look like is this, we take a breath in, we take a breath out, lock the right nostril, inhale in through the left, lock it, exhale out through the right. Breathe in through the right, lock it, Breathe out through the left. Breathe in through the left, lock it. Breathe out through the right. So you wanna do that. You could start with a minute or two or even 30 seconds, do 20 rounds. Do what's comfortable for you. Um, and over time, maybe build it up a little bit. And let's do a nice side bend here now. So forearm to the thigh. We're gonna lift the left arm, the elbow, then take the arm up, find your side bend towards the right. And then pull the elbow back and reach towards your right, nice and long. Press down through your feet. Take your attention and place it on the center of your heel, push them down. Now pull your heels towards each other. Notice how the muscles on your leg, back of your legs activate. Press down to your feet, inhale, rise up, release your hands. Why do we do alternate nostril breathing? It helps to balance out the right and left hemispheres of the brain. If you were wondering why, it's very calming for the nervous system. Place your left forearm on the thigh. Lift your right elbow up, extending over the ear. It's very good to help with balance, by the way, alternate nostril breathing. Pull the elbow back, extend to your length lawn. Feel a good stretch on the side of your rib cage. Come back to center, both elbows, just a little bit lower than shoulders. You don't have to lift your arms. If it feels like it's too much, let's look at what a side bend looks without lifting the arms up. Here's the side bend towards the right, okay? So the arm is not over the head, but we are getting a good stretch on the left side of the body. 
Pull the ribs back in case they were jutting forward. Pull them back. Side bending now towards the left. Pull the ribs back. Don't have to lift the arm. Feel a nice stretch on the side of the rib cage. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, come to center. Inhale, come to center. Good. Let's lift the right arm upwards. Turn the palm inwards. Exhale, pull it down. Inhale, left elbow lifts and arm lifts. Exhale, pull it down. Now, pretend you have a web or some kind of net in front of you. You're going to claw your fingers forward. Pull, your fingers are now in between the little nets. Pull the net back, elbows move back. Do it a few times. Inhale, arms forward. Exhale, pull back. Inhale forward. Exhale, pull back. As you exhale and you pull back, feel your shoulder blades go on your back. Reach it forward. Keep your ribs back. Now, pull your elbows back. Feel your elbows on the, on the back. I mean, your elbows. Your shoulder blades on the back. Inhale forward. Pull it back. That's it. Inhale upward. Pull it down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. What is it? There's those exercise by where you're pulling down on it. Pull it down. Elbows just go a little bit lower than shoulders. Now, take your fingertips towards each other like you're making a snow angel. It's a little cold out there for a snow angel today. So we might skip that, but we can imagine it. Good. Hands at your palms. Bring one leg back and then the other. How does the body feel now? Let's lift the right knee. Hug it in. Hug your leg in towards you. Good, extend the leg, place the heel down. Inhale, pull the knee in. Press it away, exhale, lowering it. Inhale, lift it. You can use your hands, extend it. Maybe you're still using your hands, lower it down. Notice, we want to keep the spine and the ribs up and back. So we're lifting tall, even though the leg is moving. It's like it's going in a circle, lifting, pressing, lowering, lifting, pressing the heel away, lower it. Let's find a twist. Right hand outside, left thigh, and left arm behind you, or hold the chair. Pull the ribs back, find your twist. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Come back to center, extending both heels forward. Point your toes away from you and towards you. Notice the stretch. As you point, feeling lengthening on the top of the ankle and foot, maybe across the shin and the thigh or downwards. Now we pull it towards us and you feel a stretch and you, on, the, on, the, on the back of the leg. Circle the ankles around and about holding the side of your chair. Keep your ribs up and back. I know, it's like, could she stop saying that? But we have to keep reminding ourselves until it becomes a habit. Reverse your circles. And no looking at the toes. I find when people look at the toes, they, they make faces at it. Okay, now let's find a twist towards the right. Left hand outside, right thigh, right hand behind you. Breathe in. And breathe out. Feel your ribs, pull them back. Feel your right shoulder blade on the back. Breathe in. Breathe out, 
Come back to neutral, pulling now the left knee in towards you. Hug it on in, extend it, lower it. Now you can use your hands and hold the leg as it circles around to give support. Make sure you're trying to stay up on your sitting bones in the center of them rather than back. So that, because the tendency is we pick up the leg and we want to go back. Try to stay upright, even if that means not lengthening the leg all the way. You'll be working your core here, which I know you guys love to do. Inhale, be up, circled around and back. You can hold on to the side of the chair. Not easy, is it? All right, bring the feet back in. We're going to do a few sun salutes and then we're going to bring into um, a back bend, which I'll do on the side. So arms are down, our ribs are up and back. So we're lifting up and out of the waist. Arms rise, lean forward, keeping the ribs back. Feel your weight. It transfers to your feet and your hips. Push down through your feet and your hips. Inhale, rise up. Yep, exhale. Take it forward. You're hinging from the hip. Press down through your feet. Feel your shoulder blades on your back. Press down, rise up. Hands at the heart. Beautiful. Now add in a back bend. So I'm going to turn to the side while we do our sun salutes, but you got the first part of it. So we're going to add in a back bend. So take your hands to the back of the chair and either you can hold on to the sides like around here or you can move it up a bit. Shoulders move up and back. Rib cage moves back. Lift your heart. Try keeping the ribs from doing that. See how that that's like jamming the back. That's too much. So the ribs lift. They pull back. Then you find your back bend. We're going to do this in bridge pose on the earth too, in a little bit. There's our back bend. Then inhale, circle your arms up. Exhale, take them out to the side. I, I can't take this left one out to the side, but you got it. Inhale up. Exhale, arms out to the side. Yup. Lift up, take your hands to the back of the chair, shoulders up and back, ribs back, lift the heart. You've got this. Come back upright, inhale the arms up, exhale out to the side, keep the ribs back, arms extending from your shoulder, push down to your feet, rise up, exhale, swing the arms back, hold the side of the back of the chair. Shoulders up and back, ribs back. Lift the heart. You are making a curve, so your sit bones are moving back. You're spreading your sitting bones wide and back. Come back to center, hands at the heart. And I'm gonna take this block so I can demo. This is another way to look at the neck thing, the neck alignment, the neck thing. Let's have our block here. Press your palms into the block. Lift the block upwards, keeping your ribs back. They don't have to lift all the way. Keep your ribs back as you lift the block. Push the block with your palms. Exhale, lower the block. Keep pushing your palms into the block. Inhale, press your palms into the block, lifting it. Keep the ribs back. So the tendency is as the arms go up, the ribs go forward. Keep them back. Ribs back. Arms lift. You got it. Now let's take the block behind our head. You can have your hands on the side. And you can, they elbows move forward. Ribs back. Crown of the head lifting. Gently, gently, gently pressing the back of your head into the block as the elbows rise. The heart rises and you've got a back bend. You can do the seated. I just moved a little closer so you can see. 
maybe release that and we'll do it again. Circle the shoulders around and about, get the grungies out of there. Feels good. And then let's take the black forward, press your palms into it, lift it upwards. Take the black behind your head, gently take your elbows forward and gently press your head into the block as you lift, lift your heart and you're gently pressing your head into the block. Not hard, very gentle, very gentle. Release, take the block up, push your palms into the block, lower it down and you've got that. Let's slowly find our way to the earth. So moving our chair in a safe spot, taking your blanket, your strap, your black, and coming on down. And while you're getting down there, I'll talk through that block, I mean the ball, so you can see, even though you don't have one necessarily, I wanna show it to you. So you can gently try it at home with the tennis ball. It has to be, a, you know, you don't want a card ball like a golf ball. That would not be a good idea. But let me show you just really quickly and then you can try it at another time. You can always ask me about these things too. You can email me. But so lying down, taking the ball and you can gently push it into some of your pressure point areas. You don't want to push it into your spine though. You can push it in and then just leave it there for a little bit. If you have osteopenia or osteoporosis, I don't think it's a good idea because um, I don't want you pushing in your bones. But if you have hard muscles in a sore trap, you could try it. Um, anyway, let's go on to hands and knees and do our cat cow pose. Maybe put a blanket underneath your knees. Palms are forward. Make a nice long table. So walking your knees back, we tend to shorten our tables, so make it long. And then once your palms are forward of your shoulders, round your spine, chin to chest, belly pulls in, that's cat pose. Push your inner thighs back and keep your weight centered in your palms, fingertips pressing down. Knuckle, thing, uh, pointer finger knuckle pressing down as well. Otherwise, the weight's gonna go to the outside of your hands. Let's reverse this now. Rib cage moves down, but it stays toned and knitted towards the back of your body. So this is down, just swooping, not holding the rib cage. This is pulling it back, but still finding cow pose. So this is dumping, letting it go, which isn't really feeling good on the shoulders or anything, honestly. And let's go back to cat and I'll show that again. So cat pose, keep the ribs back. As you find your cow pose, it's more controlled. It's not what the ribs aren't quite jutting down that much. You have to feel this more than I could almost describe it, but you want to try to keep your ribs back even as you do a back bend. Exhale, we round, shin the chest, cat pose. Inhale, keeping the ribs back, find your back bend, sitting bones rise. One more time. Cat, the tailbone's moving down, the ribs are moving up purposely here. Feel your shoulder blades, they're spreading. Let's rock it back and get off the hands, the palms and the wrists. Rock it forward and back a little bit. Maybe let your hips sway to the right and towards the left and back to right and towards the left. There you go. And come back to center and lift on up, extending the right leg back, push the heel away. 
Now, if your wrists have had it, you can come down onto your forearms. Push your heels away. We're gonna pull the right knee in towards us, round the spine, the ribs lift. Push the knee up towards your torso, towards your belly. Then extend out, push your heel away, extend the crown of your head forward. So you're either on your hands or your forearms, which is ever best for you. One more time, pull the knees in and up, maybe even pulse it a little bit. Chin moves towards chest. Lower the knee down, take a little break and we'll go to the other side. Left leg extends back, push the heel away. This helps to wake up the bottom of the foot with the toes curled down. And now pull the knee in towards your belly, pushing down through your palms. Unless you're on your forearms, you're pushing down through your forearms then. Knee in towards ribcage, extend it back. Extend the leg back, the heel back, the gaze forward. Notice if your ribs are dropping and lift them up, then push out through your heel. Pull the knee in and up. Extend back, keep the ribs lifted, feel your shoulder blades on your back. Take the knee down and let's come off of it, come off our palms and circle the wrists and the knuckles and the hands around and about. Maybe shake out anything that you were feeling getting stuck. We don't need that sticky. Get rid of it, let it go, shake it out. Let's even just circle the arms a little bit. Yep, let it go. Gently tap yourself as your arms go one way. And then the other. Yep, you got it. And let's come on out of that. And we're gonna go on to our bellies. Now, some people do like the blanket under their hip crest. They feel it, it's better on their lower back. So if you wanna keep it, it's fine. It's not required. A lot of people do not use it. Um, most people don't use it under their belly, but you can. And then we're gonna rest our head down on our hands and let the hips sway to the right and sway to the left and sway to the right and sway to the left. You can also turn your head right or left. Do what's most comfortable for you. Notice if putting your forehead down doesn't feel right, turn your head and see if that feels right. Turn it one way or the other. Come back to center with your hips and your head. Let's lift the right leg Spread the toes back, reach back. And then exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lift the leg, bend the knee, gently pulling the heel towards you. If it cramps, extend it out, lower it down, maybe get up and massage the hamstrings if they cramp. Lift the leg, bend the knee, pull the heel towards you. Extend it back without lowering it down. Tone your hip and then exhale, lower it down. And maybe you do a few little taps like this because that's stretching the front of the ankle. You can go ahead and tap it a little bit. As long as you don't feel cramping. If you do, then curl the toes the other way. Doing the other leg now, bend the left Heel towards you, towards your buttocks, and extend it back. Let's lift the leg, tone the hip, extend the toes back, spread them, spread your toes wildly. Exhale, lower the leg down, bend the knee, pull the heel in towards your buttocks, extend the leg, extend the toes, Lower the leg down. Inhale, leg lifts. 
Bend the leg, pull the heel in towards you, extend it, lower it down. Let your hips sway right and left. We're gonna do a little baby cobra or sphinx pose. So sphinx pose, you come up on your elbows and you can even have a block in between your palms. You don't have to. And you can press your palms into the earth and the underside of your forearms down. Then notice how your ribs may be jutting forward. Pull them back, pull the ribs back. Slightly dip the chin, pull the ribs back, lift the heart, lift the heart. So you wanna feel like the back and neck is long. You don't want it doing that. You don't want it falling back there. And then lower down, take a little break. And you can do Sphinx again or Cobra. Hands are by the side for Cobra. Ribs pull back, hips tone, shoulders up and back. Press your palms down, pull the shoulders back. Keep pulling your ribs back, shoulders up and back. You don't, if you feel lower back pain, please come down. You can be right here for Cobra, does not have to lift. Shoulders up and back, doesn't have to lift that much. This is a baby Cobra right here. And that's perfect. You're feeling your shoulder blades on your back. It is a back bend. Exhale, lower it down. One more time. Shoulders lift to ears, pull them back, pull ribs back, lift heart, and beam your heart forward. Back of the neck is long. Exhale, release. Let's bend our knee, curl our toes under, lift on up. Pull back towards a child pose. For child pose, if you have tight shoulders, you might bend your elbows. Your hips may or may not go back towards your heels. And you can take your arms forward or bend them like this and rest your forehead on your arms. Or arms are forward and hips are back and you're pulling the hips down towards your heels. You have to find the one that feels right for your body. So child pose can be adapted. All the poses can be adapted for your body, nobody else's. Breathe in, feel the back of the body, it's breathing. You can feel something's breathing you and feel the expansion in the back of your body. And then we're gonna lift ourselves up and come onto a seated position. Now for seated, we want to be on a blanket or two or a pillow so that your lower spine has a curve just like your neck. So you wanna sit on one or two blankets or pillows. Have a seat. Have a seat, find a comfortable seat so you can lift tall. If it feels like you're hanging back, you need to be on another blanket. This is not a good or a bad. It is to help your lower back find its curve. If the spine is going back like this, that's, look at what happens to the rest of the body, right? So we, if we take a blanket underneath, it lifts the hips up and you see more of a curve. So you want that. Then come into butterfly. So I'm on two blankets here. Find your butterfly and maybe put blocks or pillows under your knees to support them. And then we're gonna lift tall, take our rib cage back. I should have asked you guys, but you're on mute. What would you do next? You take your rib cage back. All right, we move forward, keeping the ribs back. There we 
we go. Hands may touch the shins or the ankles. Shoulders up and back. Breathe in. And breathe out for your butterfly. Breathe in. And breathe out for your butterfly. Now we're going to do lion's breath here. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to round our spine, take the chin to the chest, and then on the take an inhale, and on the exhale, go. So that's lion's breath. You're stretching your tongue forward and out, and you're releasing air. Very good for halitosis and a nice stretch for the tongue. Let's try that. And you know, I think it kind of releases muscles in the face too and in, around here. Let's go again. Take an inhale. On an exhale, curl your spine in like cat pose. Then lift up in the cow. Inhale and exhale. And you can move a little forward if that's okay with you. So meaning if, if it feels like you can move forward. Let's do it one more time. Take an inhale, exhale, curl your spine like half. Inhale, lift up, exhale. Have to get all that stuff out of the mouth and release a little tension in there. Let's take the block away from one side and extend the other leg. The leg can go forward or out to the side. See what makes more sense for you, what feels best for you. And then we're gonna take a little stretch again, going forward, still kept the block under the one knee. And you can use a strap or not. You can have your hands by the side of your leg until you feel a stretch behind your leg. Try not to lock the knee. If it feels like it's locking, stick something under there so it doesn't lock. You can use the strap like this, looping it around, and then gently pulling it towards you. Now, as we go forward, we're going to keep the ribs back. Ribs back, feel your stretch as you lean forward. Stop when you start to feel a stretch. Take several breaths here. Breathing in and breathing out. And breathing in and breathing out. Now, maybe you take your leg out to the side a little bit so you get an inner thigh stretch. We live tall and still hold the strap in one hand. Now, if that feels like a stretch, stop there. If it doesn't, you can lean a little bit forward with your hands and see if that does it. See how that is. You wanna keep your hips tucked down and your ribs back as you move forward. Shoulder blades are on the back. Now notice right about, see I'm right about here is where I start to feel a stretch. I don't need to go any further. You can stay there for a bit. And then if you go, oh, I could go a little bit more then you go a little bit more. If you say, oh, it's too much, you come on out of it. So we'll try that. Just a few more breaths. Maybe you point your toes. That changes it up. Maybe you flex, that changes it up. Maybe you take your arms a little bit more forward and then walk the hands back and rise up. Let's shake both legs out, shake them out. Shake them out, let the legs go side to side. Feet go side to side, shake it out. We don't wanna have you know, we want to get rid of some of anything that we're holding. Just let it go. Bending now the left knee, placing a blanket or a block under there. You can move the flesh away from your sitting bones. That's helpful too. 
helps us to sit up tall. Ribs are back. Feel right here. You can take the strap around the foot or not. For some people, they feel better taking the leg out to the side. It just feels more balanced for them on the sitting bones. So check it out. I'm going to start with the leg forward and then move it out to the side after a bit, which like we did on the other side. So we're tall. If you feel a stretch right here, no reason to go any further. Make sure there's a little softness behind the knee. If there's not, you can stick anything under there. I'm not even just use this ball under there to keep it from locking. You can use that soup can. You can use a little washcloth, a little pillow. We're gonna lean forward until we feel a stretch. Then we're gonna stop, push out through the big toe like you're stepping on the gas and breathe. Notice if you let the foot go limp, can change the stretch entirely. So you wanna pull the toes towards you. Feel that. You can put, press the toes away from you and feel that. That's gonna bring it more onto the top of the shin and the top of the ankle. Pulling the toes back is gonna bring it back behind your leg. Breathe in and out. When you're ready, walk your hands back towards your hips, lift tall, maybe adjust your leg out to the side. Take inventory, see how your body feels. Yoga is about the sensation in our body. It's about feeling the bigger energy inside of us and around us. It's not about nailing a pose. It's about being able to work from inside, feeling, using our senses. We use our senses, our sense of touch, the inner sensation from the stretch. Now, if you're feeling a stretch here on the inner thigh, you may not go forward. If you're not, you can lean a little forward, walk your hands forward till you do. Try to keep the hips pushing down into your pillow or blanket. Breathe in evenly through the nose and out through the nose. Breathing in and out. Notice that the ribs are going forward, pull them back. Maybe you're on your fingertips. That helps to strengthen the fingertips too. Then we're gonna come on up and we're gonna go down onto our backs for some bridge and half happy baby and happy baby. Let's start with bridge prep pose. So on your back, arms down by your side. Feet about hip distance apart, maybe slightly wider. Knees are upward. Now, let's play with jutting the ribs up. Now pull them back towards the earth. This gives you feedback, right? It's tactile feedback as you push your ribs down into the mat. Doesn't mean flattening your back. Keep your lower spine neutral. Push the ribs down. Now, with your upper arms pressing down, lift on up without jutting the, rib, the ribs up. Now, you want the back of your neck to have a curve. If you feel the neck flattening, please do not go any further up. Come on down. Play with finding that little bony spot right behind your head to press gently down. So, and take your hand behind your neck and make sure you feel a curve there. Make sure you feel it. Even give your hand, let your hand massage your neck a little bit. That feels very good. Then we're pushing down through our feet, lifting our ribs, Keeping the rib cage slightly down without jutting it. Now, chest is working towards chin. You might walk your arms underneath you a little bit. Some of you like to take your arms down and even interlace your fingers. That's fine if it's acceptable to you. Maybe dip your hips down. 
and then lift them up and dip the hips down and lift them up. Tone your hips, tone them, tone them, tone them. Tone those hips without squeezing your buttocks. Exhale, lower down. Take a little break, bring your palms together and touch your third eye, the middle of your forehead with your, palm, with your thumbs, the outside of your thumbs. That should feel good. That's, in fact, you can massage your third eye there. Feels very good, just circling the thumbs around on that third eye. It feels very calming to the nervous system. See, this whole practice is helping to balance out the nervous system. Take your arms down by your side. You choose which variation. Push down to your feet. Lift your hips. Lift your heart. Maybe walk your arms underneath you. Take your mind's eye to your neck. Make sure it's not flattening. There should be space. Space underneath the neck where you do not feel the floor touching it. Tone the hips. Let's sway the hips to the right, to center to the left and center, back to the right, center to the left, back to center, exhale, lower down. Bring the right knee in towards you, give it a hug, and then let it slap down towards the earth. So you're feeling the sensation of the bottom of the foot as it releases to the mat, left side. Bring the left knee in towards you. Drop it down. Right side. Drop it down. Left side. Drop it down. One more. Alternate it. Bring it in and drop it. Okay. Now, pressing your feet down into the mat, lift your toes. You can't see them, but lift them. Spread them. You can't see them. No peeking. Exhale, lower your toes down. Inhale, lift them. Exhale, lower them. Let's come up one more bridge. Lift the hips. Maybe this time, remember the neck has got space underneath it. Maybe lift one heel and then alternate the other heel and alternating and alternating, and maybe both heels rise. Exhale, lower down, release the hips down, pull your right knee in towards you, take your hands underneath the thigh and pull the right knee towards your shoulder. Lower the leg down, pull your left knee towards your shoulder, lower it down. Now, if you want a little more of a stretch, you can lengthen your left leg and pull the right knee in towards you. And your hands are behind the thigh. Then bend your left knee back in and straighten your leg towards the, the right leg towards the sky. Toes towards you, heel upward. Massage the back of your hamstring with your fingertips. Massage the back of your hamstring with your fingertips. That should feel good. And then release the leg down. Pull the left knee in towards you. Extend the right leg. Get a little stretch. You might feel that on the top of the thigh, the right thigh. You might feel a stretch on the back of the inner thigh on the left side. Maybe the outer hip. Now. Press the right foot down, knee is up. And then hands behind hamstring, massage the left hamstring as you straighten the right, I mean the left leg heels up towards the sky, toes towards you. Massaging should feel really nice. Feel good, but you're getting a stretch at the same time. Leg may not straighten all the way and that's okay. Massage the back of the leg. Say, I love you. I love you, left leg. And then let's release it and find our way to Shavasana. So 
You can put a bolster under your knees. You're relaxing down. This is so important. I was teaching in person yesterday and one of the students had a leave, but really this is the most important part of the class. So please try to stay with it. Um, bolster under knees, pillow under knees, feet on chair. It's all good. Relax down. Let your palms face upward. Walk your shoulders underneath you. You can have a little blanket under your head and probably it'll feel better to you, but you don't want to mush it like this. I see a lot of people mush it like that. See what happens to my head? It lifts up. So you want to make a nice blanket under your head. Um, like this, something like this. And then your shoulders go here and your head goes there. So relax it down because this is so important for you, for all of us, for all of us. Relaxing the breath, relaxing the whole body. Relaxing your feet. Feeling a nice natural. Remember in the beginning, we did that feather breathing. Just soft breath in and out through the nose. Relaxing your ankles. They might sway. So you're on the, just resting the sides of the ankles down. Relaxing the lower legs. Maybe you feel your calves touching the mat. Relaxing your thighs. And your hips. Notice the sensation of the hips touching the mat. Relaxing the spine. And the abdominal organs. The productive organs, allowing everything to relax from the inside. Feeling the shoulder blades on the earth. Perhaps you're in tune with the beat of your heart. You might feel the belly and the ribs expanding on the inhale and softening on the exhale. Relaxing the upper arms. In the lower arms, in the hands, feel the back of the hands resting on the earth. Feel the palms as they touch the air. Fingertips. Resting the neck and the head. Feeling the skin on your face and on your scalp relaxing. Even in tune with the inner ears, softening. Relaxing the jaw, upper and lower. The eyes. So you're turning to feeling the breath as it travels in and out the nose. In tune with the whole body relaxing. 
breathing as a whole. So stay as long as you want in your resting pose. I'll close the class and seated with palms together in front of the heart. We bow in towards this heart, towards our body and the gifts of this practice. With much gratitude, we say, may all beings be happy and free and may our words, deeds and action contribute to this happiness, joy and peace. Namaste, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, Friday and weekend. I'm here for any questions you have. If you want me to show you a little more with that ball, I will. But I'm here for any questions, anything you'd like to say. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, Mindy. I have a little cold and I was a little hesitant to do yoga, but I feel much better now. Oh, I'm Thank so you. glad. It can be hard to do yoga when it's hard to breathe through your nose. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I feel better. Thank you. Namaste. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that. Great job. Have Thank you. Have a great Thanks, day. Wendy. Thank you, everyone. You have a good weekend. Mindy? Yes? I, I have a question. Where can I buy the buckwheat pillow? I found them online. Like uh, Amazon or something? or something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, if um if you email me, I'll send you the brand that I ordered. Um, I like this one. It came with like a a nice um cover on it, kind of soft. Um, I also have this other woman who makes them by hand. Um, so I use that company too. I'm not. I, those are the two that I liked that I've tried. Okay, can um, I send you? Or can I send you my cell and you can text me on that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'll do right now. Okay. Hmm? Do you have my number? Uh, can I just send it on my cell so you can tell me? Yeah, but you need uh, my number to text it, right? Yeah. Or you so want me to send, send it to you? Uh, you can uh, text me your number, okay? Okay. Um, let me... Uh, okay, so you tell me your number and I will I write already, it down. I, I put it on the chat, you know? Oh, you put it in the chat? Okay. Yeah. My okay. glasses on. <laughs> uh -huh. Gotta get my glasses on here. Actually, my friend has a lot of problems with back, you know, and uh, she she was asking me. I said, well, I don't know, but I uh, I'll find out, you know. So yeah. Yeah, I the thing about the buckwheat is you can adjust it. Like if the pillow's too big, you can take some buckwheat out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, which you almost always will. They give too much. Okay. Okay. And then um. You could put some in a bag and just save it. And okay. the idea is to have a little bit. So it's supporting the next spine, the curve. Like this is a sandbag, but it's the same idea mm -hmm. that when you lie down, the sandbag or the buckwheat is supporting the curve of the neck. So like this, and you okay. put it under there like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's one way. If you're laying on your back, it would be the same thing. Because you don't want your head thrusting forward. That's one of the reasons the neck gets uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And is there anything for the back? You know, it depends on what's going on in the back. Well, I tell you, she's a, actually, she's a neurologist, okay? But she has lots of problems. And uh, of course, she's retired now. So, I mean, her back hurts so much. And I, I said, I'll make it with uh, buckwheat or rice or something. But I, I thought, like, if I can find something, then I don't have to make it, you know? Exactly, so. exactly. I yeah. mean, sometimes people like the bolsters underneath their knees if mm -hmm. they're lying on their back. If they're on their side, sometimes they put a little pillow in between their knees. Mm -hmm. That feel good, too. Okay. Some people love those body pillows, you know, where you lie down yeah. and you have the body pillow like right. that. Yes, yes. Like you're you're spooning somebody like, you love. Okay. So 
the pillows go in between your knees and you have your arm over like that. Uh -huh. That can be helpful when lying down. But seated is a whole nother story. It's very important that your hips are above your knees, even in a chair. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. okay. So that can be another thing. Okay. Yeah. Just send me the, you know, the uh, for, uh, uh, on text me on uh, you know, the below you. Okay. Then I, I will. Can, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Mindy. Okay. Have a good weekend. Okay. Bye-bye.